Good evening. My name is Dave Arscott. I'm the executive director here at Stratwater Research Center. It's my pleasure to welcome you all uh, to the Grassland Bird Collaboration meeting hosted by us and Willis Town Conservation Trust. It's uh, first for us to sort of collaborate on a, on a meeting like this. So uh, thank you all for coming. And we're excited to hear the presentation and the discussion tonight. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Kate Etherington. Uh, who is the executive director of Willis Sound Trust? For those of you who don't know, uh, after serving, and I'll give a little bit of her background since uh, it's new to the Willis Town Conservation Trust. Uh, after serving as a volunteer at the trust since uh, 2014, Kate joined the team in 2020 as associate uh, executive director and later transitioned to the role of uh, executive director. She was associate and now is executive director. Uh, last year. Uh, Kate has an extensive background in nonprofit management, including serving as shelter service coordinator at Sojourner Center and the senior program director and interim executive director at Philadelphia Physicians for Social Responsibility. Additionally, she holds a bachelor's degree in psychology from Colgate University, a uh, master's degree in nonprofit leadership from the University of Pennsylvania. As director uh, of Wilson Conservation Trust, Kate's responsible for overseeing the day-to-day -day management of the trust and planning for its successful future. And outside the office, she spends plenty of time outdoors, probably doing some birding, hiking, of course, the heck riding, skiing, reading, uh, and spending time with her husband and three daughters on their small farm. So uh, welcome, everyone. Welcome, uh, Kate. Okay, thank you. Thank you all for coming. For being here, I want to send a special thank you to Stroudwater Research Center for hosting us here today, um, really in the epicenter of grassland bird activity. Um, I'm going to be very brief because I'm not the main event here tonight, um, but I'm thrilled to be here with each of you and thank you all for participating in this meeting. We have a diverse group of people here in the room um, and I'm thrilled that all of you are here. Um, Everybody who's represented here, as I said, a diverse group of landowners, farmers, conservation organizations, and neighbors have a deep connection to and love for the land that provides beauty, habitat, and sustenance to people and wildlife. I'm looking forward to a productive discussion tonight where everyone can share their perspectives and experiences with the goal to help inform land management practices for conserving biodiversity on working lands. Um, I am going to now turn the mic over to Lisa Kijic, who's the Director of Bird Conservation at Willistown Conservation Trust. Um, Lisa and the Bird Conservation team have been studying bird migration in this region for over 10 years, um, and they're going to share some of their recent research on Chester County grassland and birds. Thank you, Kate, and um, thank you everyone for attending. Thanks to Stroud, especially for hosting we're in the epicenter of grassland and birds here, even though you guys care about water, you want birds and grass, I know, it's crazy. Um, but uh, thank you to everyone. It's so nice to see such a diverse group of people in the same room, and that's that's our whole goal here, is to try to find common ground where we can work together. Um, and when there's opportunity to make the most of those opportunities to, to, to save biodiversity, but also to save the the, uh, the working landscapes that were that were used to being around in this in this um, this area. And so it's just been this is a labor of love for a lot of us, but um, we all love the land, and I think that's where we all start: loving the land and loving the outdoors and loving the fact that we share this outdoors with so many other species. Uh, so without Without further going on about me, um, we're going to start with Dan Mummer from the Pennsylvania Game Commission, who is our uh, he's a, he's a, he likes the larger birds, the birds that eat our small birds. <laughs> yeah, you know, he loves all birds, but um, he's one of our strongest partners uh, and an incredible research biologist that's been dealing with that's been working with a lot of different raptors, uh, especially in grasslands. So, Dave, Dan, please, we yeah. welcome you. Thank you for coming to chat. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for inviting me to be here. Uh, yeah, my name is Dan Mummerts. I'm uh, what they call the, the wildlife recovery biologist or used to be wildlife diversity biologist until last week <laughs> um, for 12 counties of southeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, so what that means is, you know, the Game Commission is responsible for the management and conservation of all the different species of wild birds and wild mammals in Pennsylvania. 
um, a little more than 100 species of those are called species of conservation need. So those that are really declining in population, those that are threatened or endangered, um, and a, a large percentage of those, and a group of those that's declining faster than any other group of species of concern, except for bats, um, are, are grassland birds. So grassland birds are just, you know, they've really been plummeting in population uh, throughout Pennsylvania, uh, especially since the 1960s. And uh, so I'm working, you know, working on uh, several projects, working on trying to make sure that we continue to have grassland birds uh, in Pennsylvania, you know, for, for you know, coming generations. And uh, two of the projects that I'll be talking about tonight are one uh, focused on kestrels and another one focused on, on barn owls. Um, so with that, let me just start with, uh, with kestrels. Mm -hmm. Just get you clicked on there once. I think mean, that should work. And now, hopefully, I'm just here. Thank you. So, uh, the American kestrel is a type of falcon uh, that's here in Pennsylvania. We have three different types of falcons. This is one of them. Um, this is a falcon that is keyed in on grassland habitats, so pasture lands, hay fields. Um, it's one of the one of the birds of prey that uh, you can easily tell the males from the females. You can see here on the left the male with the uh, the bluish steel gray wings and head, and the female on the other side is uh, browns and blacks. So uh, this is a common uh, one of the more common birds of prey found in large areas of grassland habitat. Uh, they key in on grassland habitats such as this. Uh, you know, large landscape level uh, uh, farmland with especially this grassland component to it. Um, areas that have perch sites such as telephone wires. So often one of the main places that you might see these kestrels are grassland areas uh, perched on top of those uh, telephone wires along the side of the road. That's one of the main places where you might see these kestrels. Um, and these kestrels uh, don't actually build a nest like a lot of other birds. Uh, they use tree cavities um, or, you know, nest boxes like this uh, that we're putting up for them. And they key in on grassland habitats because the main thing that, that kestrels eat are metaphors. That's one of their main foods. So the little, the rodents that are out, out in those grassland habitats. And they also uh, primarily eat uh, large insects such as grasshoppers. Uh, they'll eat uh, cicadas, you know, so during cicada season, um, but primarily, you know, grasshoppers, uh, meadow voles, and occasionally uh, small songbirds. So here, for example, uh, this is this is Dad bringing home uh, a meadow vole to the nest box. There's a there's a bunch of nestlings inside. And kestrel population, you know, kestrels are found all throughout uh, North America, Central and South America. Uh, here in North America, everywhere on this map that's red, their population has been declining uh, since the 1960s. Uh, you can see Pennsylvania, all of Pennsylvania is included in there. And southeastern Pennsylvania, uh, including Chester County, is declining uh, faster than any other part of, of Pennsylvania uh, at a steeper rate. Um, throughout North America, kestrels have been caught by about 1.4 percent, you know, their entire population since the 1960s. Uh, in southeastern Pennsylvania and other areas uh, a little bit south of there, they've been declining by about double that rate, by about 2.6 percent each year uh, since the 1960s. So since the 1960s in southeastern Pennsylvania and areas a bit south of there, they've declined by close to 75 percent uh, over the last 40 years. So here in Pennsylvania, uh, this map, the darker the color, the better the habitat, and the more likely you are to find uh, kestrels. And you can see here, uh, this part of Chester County is, is really quite good for kestrel habitat. Uh, there's great grassland habitat, large-scale uh, fields, especially grassland fields. And this, this whole area around here, you know, 10-mile radius around here, is some of the best grassland bird habitat that I know of in southeastern Pennsylvania. It's exceptional. 
reasons for concern uh, with petrels, you know, why are they declining? You know, why are they declining, especially, you know, in southeastern Pennsylvania? Um, large part of this is loss of habitat. You know, this picture here, um, I, I live in Lydix, so in Lancaster County, and this picture is, uh, this was taken right on the outskirts of Lydix. Uh, we're losing our farmland habitat. You know, the outskirts of Lydix are just being developed at such a fast rate. Uh, people are selling, ag land is being uh, sold and developed, uh, being converted into housing developments. Um, that's one large thing that's going on throughout, you know, throughout much of Pennsylvania. Um, Another thing happening is, um, is conversion of farmland habitat from, uh, you know, back in the 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s, we had much more grassland habitat in our ag lands, much more pasture land, much more hay fields. Today, when you look around much of uh, the ag lands that's still here in Pennsylvania, mostly corn and soybean. And that's not, exceptionally, that's not good habitat for these grassland birds compared to pasture and uh, and hay fields. So that's another large reason why these grassland birds are declining. Um, another thing that could be going on with, with our cavity nesting birds, such as uh, kestrels and starlings, or kestrels and barn owls, are uh, losing our, our cavities, you know, large trees that hold uh, cavities for them and uh, old barns that the, these kestrels and uh, barn owls can get into for nesting. Uh, so that could be another problem with them. Uh, another, another issue might be uh, environmental toxins. So with these uh, barn owls and kestrels that are mostly eating meadow bowls and other rodents, uh, toxins such as rodenticides could be a, a real problem with them. And that's one thing that we're gonna be studying. Uh, just last week, uh, a farmer called me and said that uh, he found a dead barn owl on his property. So I, I went and picked it up. Um, and then three days later, he called and said, you know what, second, another barn owl uh, was found dead on my property. So I picked that up and we're gonna be uh, looking to see if it's possibly uh, 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 rodenticides because I, I did have a conversation with him and, and said, you know, do you, have, uh, do you have rodenticides on the property? And he said, yes, you know, because, you know, I, I sell chickens, I'm a chicken farmer and it's the, uh, the chicken companies say that I have to have rodenticides around the chicken houses. And so that, that could be an issue. Um, so one thing that we're doing, uh, the Game Commission, we, we, uh, we started this uh, kestrel program, looking to see where kestrels still are located uh, throughout southeastern Pennsylvania, studying uh, where they are and seeing how many young they have each year, um, and checking nest boxes to see what their nesting success is uh, each year. Uh, we do this. Uh, through putting up these uh, kestrel nesting boxes where we have excellent grassland habitat. Um, and in the last, uh, last six years, we, uh, we placed more than 360 of these kestrel boxes up in uh, six different counties of southeastern Pennsylvania. And uh, each of these boxes, uh, these, these kestrels are using them for nesting from May through July. And we have this incredible team of, uh, of volunteers and our land managers who check the boxes every other week to see uh, how many of them are successful with kestrels, how many young they have. And then when the young ones get to a certain age, uh, we ban the nestlings. So successful box. This is a good example of a successful kestrel box. Uh, here's the female uh, sitting on eggs. And uh, the eggs take about 30 days to hatch. And uh, these nestlings here are about 10 days old. This last year, um, out of those boxes, we had 117 of them that were successful with kestrels uh, nesting. And uh, we banded 415 uh, nestling kestrels out of those boxes. Um, so just, uh, it's been really successful and it's been such a cooperative effort with, uh, with the landowners. You know, we, for each one of these boxes, we, uh, we, we find the landowner, we talk to them about kestrels and the importance of uh, these nest boxes and how they can successfully uh, be used by kestrels to produce uh, nestlings on their property. And uh, we've just had a huge positive uh, um, uh, you know, turnout from landowners who have who really gotten into this program are, and are happy to have these nest boxes on their property. So here is an example. Uh, this, this kestrel is ready to be banded, so I take them down and, uh, and, and get the bands on. Um, 
here's this is a map of where these petrol boxes are located uh, throughout the region that I cover in southeastern PA. Um, you can see each one of the red dots is a nest box that, that was successful with kestrels uh, this past year. Uh, so 117 red dots here. And where the dots match up, you know, even the black ones, this is where the good grassland habitat is in south, southeastern Pennsylvania. So you can see like northern Dalton County, much of Lancaster County. Um, another person is, is actually has his own uh, kestrel program. So that's why I don't have any pestle boxes in this area because he already has that area covered. Uh, Berks County, and we're really working on uh, getting more and more kestrel boxes up uh, throughout Chester County, especially this area. You know, this, this whole area is just exceptional with kestrel boxes. And, um, you know, the person here, Susan Quigley, uh, she's really made a huge uh, impact on this program in, in Chester County, uh, knowing a lot of the landowners and talking with a lot of the landowners and, uh, and working to get a lot of these boxes up. Uh, so that's a little bit about kestrels. Uh, now moving on to uh, to barn owls. So with barn owls, uh, there's eight different species of, of owls in Pennsylvania. Uh, the barn owls are medium sized, so you know somewhere in between um, great horned owl and solid owl, being you know large and small uh, in the state. Um, barn owls have you know dark eyes compared to like great horned owls, which have those big golden eyes, uh, golden yellow eyes. Um, and barn owls can also be distinguished by really light front, light colored front that's spotted, whereas the other owls have more of a streaked front. And uh, barn owls don't have the typical hoot hoot, you know, of a, of a typical owl. They make this really loud screaming sound or hissing sound. Um, so if you, if you hear that, you know, in barn or silo or out on your property at night, could very well be a barn owl. Here's typical habitat uh, for barn owls here in Pennsylvania. Um, grassland habitat, ag lands on the landscape level. Um, so I typically, you know, people often ask how much, how much grassland habitat is needed uh, for, for a family of barn owls. And I would typically say uh, at least hundred acres of grassland habitat within about a half mile radius of where they nest. Um, that's, that's about average. So if you were to have even a 25 acre grassland field that's just surrounded by, by woodlands, you know, uh, you're not going to get, you're not going to get barn owls. They need much more grassland habitat. And the reason for that is that their primary prey, like kestrels, their primary prey are meadow voles. And uh, they eat typically about three to four meadow voles every single day or every single night since they're nocturnal. Um, and so when you have a family of barn owls, so a pair, of, a pair of barn owls and on average about five or six young ones, that family of barn owls will eat about 2,500 meadow voles and other rodents every year. So they do an incredible job of rodent control. So they eat meadow voles, they eat mice, they'll eat rats, they'll also eat shrews, and that pretty much makes up their diet. Um, they're exclusively going after these kind of rodents. So they are exceptionally good to have around. Barn owls are also cavity nesters. So you might see them nesting in, in trees. Um, you might, they might nest in barns. They don't actually build a nest just like kestrels. So they look for, if they're nesting inside of a barn, I've seen them nesting in between bales of hay. You know, they'll just, they'll just lay their eggs right in between those bales of hay and incubate right on top. Um, I've seen them nest on the tops of silos, often there's like a concrete ring at the very top or silos at the very top. Um, I've climbed up silos and seen them nesting uh, right up there. Um, and a lot of these areas aren't very safe you know, for these barn owls because either uh, barn cats can get to them or I've seen uh, eggs and nestlings drop from the top of uh, silos down to the ground. So one thing we're doing for them is putting up these, these barn owl nesting boxes. Um, these boxes are much bigger than a kestrel box. So a kestrel box is about like, about like this, whereas a barn owl box is about, um, about three and a half to four feet long, foot and a half tall, foot and a half wide. So a much larger structure. Um, and that's because they're, uh, they're a larger bird. And I've seen up to uh, nine young ones in a box. Um, so they can have pretty large clutches. And uh, they also, uh, 
They also have, uh, can sometimes have two clutches uh, per year. So a lot of young. So here's the distribution in Pennsylvania for barn owls. Uh, the top map here, this is, this is taken from this five-year study called the, the Breeding Bird Atlas in Pennsylvania, where thousands of birds are across the state were looking for evidence of breeding for all the different species of bird in Pennsylvania. The top map is from the 1980s, so five, five year time period in the 1980s, where each one of those dots represents where uh, barn owls were seen to have evidence of them breeding. So you can see pretty much all the different corners of Pennsylvania, um, found especially in South Central and Southeastern Pennsylvania. Um, but you can see even these areas right outside of Philly, you know, we had barn owls in the 1980s. And a second study was done, same, same thing, thousands of birds across the state, spending five years looking for evidence of, of all the different species. And this is where barn owls were found 20 years later. So in, you know, in the early 2000s. And you can see that their range is really contracted and not nearly as many barn owls uh, in those counties outside of, outside of Philly, most likely because of a lot of the development that's been going on, loss of, loss of ag land. Um, in that 20 year period, 53% decline in barn owls. And that's just a 20 year period. So primary concerns, you know, why, why are we losing our barn owls? Um, same with kestrels, same with, you know, a lot of our other grassland birds uh, in, this, in this state. Um, one part might be loss of nest sites. So loss of large tree cavities, uh, loss of uh, the old wooden barns, you know, that, that have openings that they can get in and out of and, and lay their eggs in, in those barns. A lot of, a lot of uh, barns across the state are being replaced um, by, uh, by male-sided pole barns, you know, and they just can't access those barns. And, they, and there's no flat surfaces if they can get in to, uh, to, to nest in those areas. Um, so, but probably more important, you know, as a reason why they're declining, uh, is just loss of, loss of the foraging habitat, loss of that, that pasture land, that hay field habitat on the landscape level, and, and loss of ag lands in general. Um, we're seeing so much development of our ag lands across the state, and we're seeing uh, conversions, you know, of, of our hay fields and pasture lands to row crops, you know, corn and soybean primarily. And uh, it's, it's just loss of habitat for these owls. So uh, the Game Commission, uh, we started in uh, 2005. So it's, so it's been, uh, what, 17 years now. Uh, we started this Barn Owl Conservation Initiative. And with that, uh, we've been working to get more, more uh, safe and, and uh, successful nest sites with uh, putting uh, barn owl boxes out where there's good grassland habitat. So we, we've gotten more, more than 200 of these nest boxes out uh, to sites across the state that have good habitat otherwise. Uh, and we've confirmed barn owls nesting at 240 uh, sites across the state. Um, this is a bird that's much more rare uh, than, than kestrels. Uh, they are, they're listed as near threatened. So they're not threatened or endangered uh, at this time, uh, but considered near threatened. Um, but on average, you know, 240 sites across the state, you know, throughout all those years, but on average, we only find about 35 active sites for barn owls uh, throughout the entire, you know, state of Pennsylvania. So they're, they're quite rare. Um, on average, uh, I typically find uh, usually, about, usually about 10 of those, uh, seven to 10 are here in Southeastern Pennsylvania. Um, so Southeastern Pennsylvania is a stronghold uh, for barn owls uh, in the state, but this number has really decreased over the years. When I started this project uh, 15 years ago, uh, 17 years ago, uh, it wasn't, I was typically finding uh, about 25 active nest sites for barn owls uh, in Southeastern Pennsylvania. Now I'm typically finding only about seven, seven to 10. Um, I had a couple of years where I banded over 100 nestlings of barn owls, uh, and nowadays I'm lucky to band 15 to 20. So they've really declined in population uh, here in southeastern Pennsylvania, and that's just you know just in the 15 to 20 years that I've been working with barn owls. Um, one thing, one huge question that I, I don't know what the answer is is why have I I've not been able to find 
Let me get a map. Here's a map of where we found barn owls, you know, throughout the state. Um, the open rings are where we found, we found barn owls in previous years, but not in 2022. Um, the dark rings that are filled in are active sites in 2022 um, and at least one year prior in this project. And these few that are red rings, those were brand new nest sites uh, found in 2022. So, um, 2000, uh, this is 2021. We found 26, only 26 active nest sites for barn owls throughout all of Pennsylvania. Um, one thing to notice is that I get to find an active nest site for barn owls anywhere in Chester County. Um, and I don't, I don't know why that is. Uh, there's excellent habitat here in, in the county, you know, especially this part of Chester County with all these incredible grass and fields, um, hay fields, pasture lands. Uh, seems like the grassland component is there, um, but maybe it's the nest site, maybe la lack of, lack of uh, barns that they can get into and access. So uh, one thing that would be really good would be to start getting uh, more barn owl boxes uh, out to this area. Uh, I, I think that would be something that we could really focus on uh, over the coming years. Um, so if anyone has great grassland habitat, would like a, a barn owl box, let me know. And uh, we'll see what we can do about that. Um, but you can see neighboring Chester County, Lancaster County has quite a few, uh, Levin County, Berks County, uh, we're, we're finding barn owls all around Chester County, but just not here yet. So, uh, and also if anyone knows of any barn owl sites, because I'm sure I'm positive, I don't know every barn owl site in the, in the area. So let me know if you know of some barn owl sites. Going back, uh, so this is, this is frequently how we uh, install these barn owl boxes is often put them on the insides of a barn. And uh, that way the barn can stay sealed and shut. And I have the entrance to the box facing out. So that all we do is cut a little hole in the barn wall and the owl can go right out and right back into the, uh, into the barn. And the rest of the barn stays sealed so that you don't get starlings and pigeons and other, other birds coming into the barn. Um, and it still looks nice. Um, but that way the uh, owls can access it. The, 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 the box itself is, you know, stays up and it doesn't get uh, destroyed by the weather and it lasts as long as the, the barn itself. Uh, another way we can do it is that if there's excellent grassland habitat in the area, uh, but there's not a good nest site, we can put them up on posts like this. Um, so that's another possibility. And we have several like this that are, that are successful with barn owls. Um, and if we're successful, this is, this is what we find. So we open up a nest box, Here's the female. Um, they typically have five to six uh, young ones uh, per time, but like I said, I've seen up to nine at one time. And here's what they look like uh, when they're about, these guys are about five to six. The youngest one, the youngest one is about four weeks old. The oldest one is around six and a half weeks old. So uh, they, uh, they hatch in order that the eggs were laid. And you typically have about a two week difference between the youngest barn owl and the oldest in the clutch. Here's the map. And that's all I have for you today.